go to whichever room for the presentation. We're going to get started in just a minute. Okay, I'm going to take over here in a minute. Good morning, everyone. I'll give you a few more seconds to get settled and make sure you want to be in here. Okay, um, I'm Richard Jenkins. I'm the uh, general field representative for Rural Utility Service Telecommunications Program. I cover the states of uh, Virginia, West Virginia, and a little portion of North Carolina now. Um, basically, the northwest uh, corridor there, where, there's, where the two interstates uh, cross. Um, so we'll get started. Not to bore you too much with history, but Rural Utility Service started as REA back in the 30s. Um, we uh, were given a mandate in uh, 1949 to begin financing tele uh, well, primarily telephone systems, uh, rural, cooperative, uh, community-owned uh, networks. And we evolved into a new agency, uh, Rural Utility Service, and, and became a subset of Rural Utility Service in 1995 as the telecommunications program. Uh, since uh, the total portfolio, I can't, I can't remember the total portfolio we've uh, uh, loaned or uh, given away in the form of grants since 1949, but from 2009 to present, including ERA funds, it's been $6.9 billion in all of our programs. Um, a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, for this fiscal year, uh, and, and I'll explain these programs as we go forward what they are, but for fiscal year 2016, we have $690 million available uh, in the infrastructure loan program. Um, those, that program finances new and improved services for existing ILEC cooperative type telephone companies. The uh, Farm Bill Broadband Loan Program is an ever-evolving, complicated um, uh, endeavor. Um, there's uh, quite a few changes with this rendition. Basically, it becomes more of a competitive type of program where um, it, you're not just, it's just not um, uh, business case. Uh, the decision to make the loan is not just business case, but it, it, it's more or less of, of how many unserved customers you can serve. So in other words, we rank those applications after their deemed feasible as to how well those funds can be spent to serve unserved uh, customers, unserved rural residents. Uh, 
Um, our infrastructure loan program, uh, it's not as popular as it used to be. Uh, out of the $690 million that's, that's been our standard appropriation, um, we're going to get about, uh, I think, last count uh, coming out of the national office is about $260 million of that uh, $690 million is going to be used this year. With the uh, Farm Bill Broadband Loan Program, we had two application windows. Um, that uh, new, uh, well, going back to the 2015 fiscal year, those applications are in review, and I can tell you that we had 15 loans in process. Out of those 15 loans, I think four were deemed eligible and were uh, funded, and those were in primarily in the Midwest, Western states, uh, Big Sky area, we like to call it. No broadband loans made in my three states, at least. The, the 2016 window, both application windows have closed. Um, I can tell you that um, it was uh, it was pretty popular. We we had uh, in the first round we had 15 applications. In the second round we had 15 applications. Um, there were some hiccups with the loan applications and, and quite a few of them were deemed ineligible uh, for several reasons, uh, feasibility, economic feasibility, or just not uh, basically following the, the rules and re regulations for the application. Uh, so it's, it's, not a, it's not an easy application, uh, but it's not impossible. Now, um, I'll just give you an overview of the, uh, the uh, standard um, loan terms um, for, I think this is for our, um, this is for, yeah, okay, I'm just making sure what this slide is. This is for both of our loan programs. Um, uh, standard loan terms include a, a two-year interest deferral. I'm sorry, two-year principal deferral. Uh, interest rate uh, can be at the cost of money. Um, we, most people want to take the FFB route where we can, uh, you, you take uh, a couple of points above the uh, uh, treasury rate, and as you know, treasury rate's all-time low right now, so uh, we're making advances on existing loans at about 1.6%. Um, uh, the uh, term or maturity uh, is life of the facilities plus three years. I can tell you that the, mature, the, the term for most of our uh, fiber to the home type projects are about 19 years is what, what the average is. Um, there are some modifications that can be made at the discretion of the administrator. Um, we can extend, if the interest rates were to rise above 2%, which we have all those same uh, poverty rate and uh, cost of money. So all those interest rates are available, but right now the FFB money is the best, the best choice, and that's where everybody goes. But we have interest rates as low as 2%. If the interest rate would ever arise above that, the administrator can make a decision and allow a lower interest rate. Um, and uh, extended uh, maturity dates, amortization periods, and uh, priority for projects that serve trust areas. Uh, a trust area would be uh, a, a substantially underserved trust area would think think Indian Reservation, think uh, any other tr uh, federal um, native land uh, type situation. I can and will help you with any loan application. I can help you with with any um, uh, 
questions regarding uh, how to apply, um, help you review your information to make sure it meets the minimum requirements to uh, be successful. What I can't do is I can't be your business consultant. I can't help you uh, decide whether it's a and, and, and help you make decisions or or help you come with uh, come to a conclusion that would make a successful application. That's up to you. That's for a loan. So we have a construction period. So with our loans, I think we have a, both loans, we have a five-year construction period. So we want to see you totally build out and operating in five years. As a matter, as a matter of fact, our pro forma is a five-year pro forma. And so that's we want to see construction where you're lying within those five years to make that business decision. Okay, the Community Connect program. Anybody ever heard of that? Okay, it's pretty popular, especially down here. Um, for, ten, for this year, we only have 10.3 million available. It's gonna come out to, with rescissions, we're gonna have about 11.25, I think, is what they've told me. Um, I was hoping for more. I probably told people there would be more, just in hopes. Sometimes if you say it enough, there'll be more. <laughs> it's one of those things, but it wasn't. Um, we have, uh, it, it's, it's a program that's geared to bring broadband to an area that has nothing. That's, that's the best way to think about, will a Community Connect grant work for my needs? So you gotta think about a community that has no instance of broadband. Now we don't consider Satellite broadband is, is not considered in, in this. We don't consider that a viable form of broadband. So we will lend or grant into a satellite, uh, an area, which basically is the entire United States is covered by satellite broadband. Um, broadband service is defined as four megabits per second download and one megabit per second upload. Now, you say, why so low? Well. Like I said, it's primarily this program is to provide something where there's nothing. And I get this question all the time about, well, what about mobile broadband from a, a wireless carrier? Well, even 4G technology, you may be able to get above four megabits per second download. You're very rarely gonna get one megabit upload. So we take a look at both of that. We didn't do a combined for that reason, and that's been my uh, it's been my findings in the field when I do my investigations. Very rarely can they meet the upload requirement of one megabit, even if an LTE type uh, service is available. There's a 15% matching requirement, so you have a little bit of uh, uh, your own funds in there just to just to keep you. Um, I don't don't use the term honest, not to keep you honest, but to keep you uh, interested and motivated, and and make the project a success. Uh, the other program that's been pretty, um, it's been popular here, uh, more so with uh, maybe in through the University of Virginia. I know they have some projects that that we funded them that are in this area. I can't think of any specific distance learning grants or distance learning telemedicine grants. I'm sorry, I can't. Galax, Virginia, um, visiting nurse project. Um, and that was really successful. And that, that uh, I think was a 2014, 2014 grant. And um, so they, they uh, what they did was they sent out, uh, were able to send nurses to recently discharged patients who had chronic illness, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart, can, heart disease, something that, that routinely requires rehospitalization. And with this visiting nurse program, they were able to put uh, 
devices in the home where the patient could self-report their vital signs and things like that. And if they were on the verge of a relapse, they could identify that early and try to try to treat them before it became uh, even more of a problem. Um, the grant funds devices, hardware. Uh, so, so don't think of it as we can't uh, fund any telecommunication connections, any telecommunication infrastructure, but what we can fund is the hardware. Uh, that's the uh, video conferencing, uh, some of the stuff you see here uh, that, that's being used. We can fund that. High uh, definition screens, servers, content recorders, gateways, so some of those things. So that grant, uh, pretty popular grant. And believe it or not, we have uh, this year, we're gonna fund 75 applications nationwide. Average of about uh, 700,000, I think, each grant. 700,000 buys a lot of peripheral computer equipment. Um, this update's kind of out of date. I need to need to get a little better um, update on the funding levels of, of the past projects. Um, but it's similar. Um, we, with Community Connect program this year, we got 73 applications total. I think we're gonna be able to fund about four of those, to tell you the truth. So it's a highly competitive program. Um, we're going to release the NOFA for that program again uh, in probably f April 2017. So be looking for that. I'll be happy to come talk with you, explain the program, help you decide whether you want to apply. I can't really help you with it is a competitive grant, so I, I can't help you with the application, but I can help you decide whether it's worth your time to apply. Um, We'll be planning webinars uh, uh, during that application window. Usually that's a 90-day application window, or did they have a 60-day window? Usually it's a 90-day window uh, for application in the Community Connect. Um, but just take my, what, I, I'll, one thing that I'll tell you, and I'll show you how to do it if, if we have time here today, is go to our website and um, sign up for a, uh, 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 our email updates or our email notifications um, and that'll give you a heads up right when we publish an OFA we will send it directly to your inbox you'll know probably the same time I do distance learning telemedicine oh let me back up to Community Connect for fiscal year 2016 we're in the process of making awards right now um, we received 73 applications this year maybe I said that we're going to be able to fund probably three or four of those, but we still have to field verify, verify 